Hello all, welcome to my channel. In case you are watching for the first time, this is a channel on engineering studies focusing more on electrical and electronics engineering. Please check description box for more videos. Also, please like, share and uh, subscribe. Do click on the bell button to get notified as I upload new video on every week. I also have another channel related to competitive examination preparation. Please support it by sharing with your friends. You can find the link in the description box. Welcome to the playlist of basic electrical engineering. In this session, I'll be discussing how to generate AC voltage and AC current. We'll have a brief discussion on the generation of AC voltage and current. First of all, you have to consider the diagram. You can, everybody can look at the diagram. First of all, you can able to see the coil A, B, C, D. It is very clearly visible. It is having the rectangular shape, A, B, C, D. And uh, you, you can able to see the permanent magnet, which is having north and south pole. In between north and south pole, you can able to see the group of magnetic lines of force that is called a magnetic flux. If you can, if you can, if it is possible, you can have able to use electromagnet also, either permanent magnet or electromagnet. Anything can be used here. In between, you are going to keep the rectangular copper coil and uh, you are trying to rotate the re rectangular coil uh, at an angular frequency of omega. And uh, let us move, move ahead with the further components. You can able to see A and B. It is very clear that A and B. A and B are called slipper rings. Okay. Apart from that, you can able to see the brushes 1 and 2. 1 and 2 are called the brushes. It is made up of carbon and uh, current will be collecting with the help of that carbon brush. And uh, if you connect a resistor, the current will be flowing through the resistor and you can use the resistive load. Okay, everything can be visible very clearly. The generation of AC that will be taken place with the working principle of Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. You have to recall the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. How you can able to generate electricity by using Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. The EMF which is generated here, that is dynamically induced EMF. That point also you have to remember. Now the generated voltage that will be depending on uh, the following parameters. The number one, uh, the number of turns of the coil. Here you can able to see A, B, C, D. As I told you that A, B, C, D will be, that coil will be rotating in different direction. Now we can able to say that uh, the coil and the flux both are in the same direction. So the angle theta will be zero degree. Where you can able to see the first diagram. Here the coil that is perpendicular with the flux. Therefore, we can able to say that theta will be 90 degree. Okay, theta will be at 90 degree. Now we can able to see that uh, the, the voltage generated across the particular resistor or across the load, that will be depending on how many number of turns are used in the coil, number one. Number two, what about the strength of magnetic field? Depends on the strength of the magnetic field. So you can use either permanent magnet or electromagnet. Okay, if you want to have a uh, powerful, uh, the magnetic field, you can go ahead with the temporary magnet. That means you can increase more current, therefore it become, uh, it generate more magnetic field. And also the rotation, the speed at which a coil or magnetic field rotates. So that is also matters a lot. That means omega, the angular speed, that is also uh, matters a lot, omega. So these are the various factors which are depending on the voltage or EMF generated in the coil or across the load. So this point you have to remember. Now let us explain how it is going to happen, how the voltage will be generated. So you can able to see the magnetic field, see flux. So magnetic flux that will be flowing like this, okay. And uh, the coil is placed over here, this is your coil. The coil is rotating at an angle of theta. Uh, definitely we can able to say that when the maximum EMF will be generated, the maximum EMF will be generated when uh, the magnetic flux that is perpendicular with the coil. Okay, if coil and the magnetic field both are perpendicular, the maximum voltage will be generated. On the other opposite hand, if the magnetic flux and the coil both are in the same direction, you will be getting the minimum flux. Okay, sorry, minimum EMF will be generated. Okay, the, the angle of rotation of the coil also matters a lot. So uh, uh, this condition you have to remember. So rectangular coil and which is having n number of turns, which is rotating in the uniform magnetic field at an angular velocity of omega radian per second. So, you know, when the maximum uh, EMF will be generated, that means 
when uh, the magnetic field that is cutting perpendicular with the coil definitely the maximum flux will be generated maximum emf will be generated at that time maximum flux linkage will be taken place because both the uh, magnetic field and the coil are perpendicular that means maximum flux linkage will be taken place okay so we can able to say that uh, this the component can be divided into two segments the first component will be uh, the vertical component will be phi m cos omega t and the horizontal component that will be phi m sin omega t okay uh, this will be phi m cos omega t phi m uh, cos omega t or cos, cos theta omega t and uh, here uh, phi m sin omega t the thing is in the in this case uh, the coil and uh, magnetic field both are in the same direction so flux linkage is minimum wherein uh, whenever the, the this component phi m cos omega t will be re resolving at that time uh, the magnetic field and the coil both are perpendicular to each other so that the maximum flux will be generated maximum flux linkage will be happening in this particular uh, segment okay so we will be considering the second component that means phi is equal to phi m cos omega t i think you are understanding okay now let us see how about the emf induced see the flux linkage of the coil that will be depending on the number of turns also so if, if you are adding more number of turns the maximum flux linkage will be taken place therefore the total flux linkage can be written as n into phi so here you can write the uh, cosine component that means phi m cos omega t that is that is having more uh, significance zone here because uh, the magnetic field that will be perpendicular uh, with the magnetic field that is perpendicular uh, with respect to the coil uh, at this particular segment that means n phi means n in n into phi horizontal component you have to consider that means phi m cos omega t so you need to understand why we are not considering sin omega t because at that particular time uh, the flux and the coil that both are in uh, parallel manner both are in the same direction at that time flux linkage will be minimum so we are not considering phi m sin omega t that point you have to re recall and uh, you know that uh, this is a total flux linkage n phi or you can write n phi m into cos of okay this point you have to remember now according to faraday's law we can able to write e, e is equal to n into d phi by dt okay is equal to n into d phi by dt that means uh, the induced emf will be depending on the number of turns of the coil and the flux linkage okay that i have written over there so definitely the emf for voltage that will be depending on uh, the principle of faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so now let us uh, derive an expression what might be the total voltage generated and what might be the total current generated in the particular coil so we have will be having a discussion now let us recall the uh, derivation okay so first in the foremost thing you have to write according to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction the induced emf or voltage you can write it as minus n d phi by dt is equal to oh, minus n into d phi by dt that is the first equation you, you are supposed to write uh, this is a fundamental i already explained the session uh, here why minus why what is the need for minus sign because now do one thing minus n into d phi by dt so we can able to write uh, e is equal to uh, or else you can able to write e, e is proportional to uh, d phi by dt that you can write like this e is directly proportional to d phi by dt okay is this is actually the faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction it is very clear or else you can write e is proportional to d phi by dt okay now you can recall the same equation e is proportional to d phi by dt or is it, or we can write e is equal to minus uh, d phi by dt okay minus n into d phi by dt so you have to substitute the values that means e is equal to minus d by dt of n into phi where n phi is the total flux linkage n is the number of turns of the particular coil uh, my, uh, minus of d by dt of uh, n phi now do one thing n can be taken outside let me take n outside it's a con uh, constant number of turns will be constant only minus n into d by dt of what might be the value of phi because you have to consider the horizontal component that means phi m cos omega t this horizontal components only will be generating the maximum amount of flux linkage therefore we will be considering uh, d minus n into d by dt of phi m cos omega t so phi m also can be taken outside now what you can do is you have to differentiate it so what is the differentiation of 
cos omega t d by dt of cos omega t it will be sin uh, minus sin omega t into omega you have to apply the chain rule of differentiation therefore minus omega can be taken outside minus omega n phi m into minus sin omega t finally uh, what you will be getting you are able to get omega n phi m into sin theta volt so you can call it as equation number 1 please recall equation number 1 is equal to omega into n into phi m into sin theta so you can call it as first equation till this point i think it is very clear if you are having any doubts put up in the comment box i will reply to you okay now recall equation number 1 let us move on to the further session see uh, when the coil has turned to 90 degree at that particular time what is going to happen uh, obviously the maximum flux linkage will be taken place right? so when theta is equal to 90 degree what is the value of sin theta sin 90 means 1 Hence, uh, the EMF has the maximum value, say EM. So you can recall the equation number one. First equation you have to recall. See, let us recall the first equation. So whenever theta is equal to nine ninety degree, theta is equal to ninety degree, we will be getting the maximum value of induced EMF. Therefore, instead of theta, put ninety degree. So E is equal to how much? Omega n into phi m. So that means uh, this value is the maximum value. Okay. Uh, so we can able to write the EM. The maximum value of induced EMF is given by omega into n into phi m. So let me write the capital letter EM. I think you can write capital letter EM. So omega into n into phi m because it is the maximum value of EMF when theta is equal to 90 degree. Now do one thing. So what is the equation of flux density? The maximum value of flux density is equal to okay total flux. So maximum value of flux divided by area. Or else we can write the phi m is equal to b m into a. B m into a. This can be written. Now, in in spite of writing phi m, as you can observe, in spite of writing phi m, I am going to write it as b m into a. See, I have written b m into a. Hope you are agreeing with me. Omega n into b m into a. One more thing. What is omega? Omega is the angular speed. We can write omega. Omega is equal to Two uh, pi m. So omega means angular frequency. Angular frequency. You can able to write uh, in terms of supply frequency. That means omega is equal to two pi into f. Two pi f. So in spite of omega, I am going to write two pi f. Then in spite of b m, I am going to write it. Uh, in spite of phi m, I am going to write it as b m into a. So what might be the total equation? So the maximum value of e m of e m is given by two pi f into n into b m into a volt. You know, we can call it as equation number two, where B M is the maximum flux density in Weber per uh, meter square. Okay, Weber per meter square, and A is the area of the coil in uh, a meter square. F is the frequency of rotation in coil in terms of revolution per second. So this point you have to keep in your mind. Okay, so please recall uh, E M is equal to two pi of N into B M into area. So call it as equation number two. So we have equation number one and two, and uh, recall appropriately. Okay, let us continue. Our ultimate goal is to what is the total voltage which is generated and what is the total current which is going to generate. That is our ultimate goal. Now we can able to write. Uh, we call it as recall equation number one. So what is equation number one? E is equal to C. E is equal to omega n phi m sine theta. So what is omega n phi m? Look at this omega n phi m. So omega n phi m will be E m, where E m is the omega n phi m. E m means omega into n into phi m. Is it okay? Okay, fine. So we can write the induced E m for voltage that is given by in spite of omega n phi m. What I will write? I am going to write it as E m sine theta. E m sine theta. What is theta? Theta we can write it as omega t. Theta is equal to omega t. So we'll be writing uh, E m into uh, sine omega t. Sine omega t. Okay. E, C, e m is equal to E is equal to E m into sine omega t, where E m is the maximum value of voltage, maximum value. E m is known as maximum value into sine omega t. Okay. So that point you have to recall. So uh, I'll be writing uh, the same equation in the coming slide. So please have a look on this. 
So that's the final expression. Yes. Look at this. E is equal to E m sine theta, or you can write it as E m sine omega t. Call it as equation number three. Similarly, because you are using the resistive load, both the current and voltage both are in the same phase, so that we can write it as I is equal to I m sine omega t. Both current and voltage both are having both are starting at zero and uh, uh, resulting at uh, one eighty degree or continuously. Okay, consider a single wave. Both are in the same phase. I will be explaining what is the phase, what is the meaning of phase. So, E is equal to E m sine omega t. I is equal to I m uh, sine omega t. Okay, so we we know that uh, omega can be written as two pi m. Omega it is very clearly visible that omega is equal to two pi m. And uh, similarly here also you can able to replace. So let me modify the equation. E is equal to E m sine theta can be written as E is equal to E m sine uh, omega t. So omega means two pi f, two pi f into t. Okay. So one more relation, the relation between frequency and the time period. Frequency is equal to one by time period. Both are inversely proportional. So do apply here. If I apply in this relation, uh, E m into sine uh, into two pi instead of uh, a frequency, I am going to write as t. Two pi, two pi by t of t. Where t is the time period, total time period. Uh, t, this small small letter t is the function of time. That's the difference. Time period means uh, this one. I'll be showing you. This is the time period. Look at this. So this will be the time period. I'm going to explain what is the time period, frequency, everything. So at that time you will understand. This will be the time period. Time taken for completion of one cycle. That is called a time period. Likewise, let me write the expression for i. I is equal to i m sine two pi f into t. F can be written as one by t. So two pi by t into t. Okay. So this is a relation between time period and the frequency. Very important. Time period is equal to one by frequency. Okay. And uh, you can able to represent the voltage which is generated across the particular resistive load. Okay. Uh, due to the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic inertia, like this. So this is an uh, EMF induced in the particular coil. So if you connect a resistive load, definitely current is passing through the resistive load. You can use other type of load also, but uh, let us start from the beginning, right from the beginning, right from the scratch. That means we'll be using the resistive load. Uh, this is actually EMF. Like this, current also will be flowing like this. It's a waveform of current. Current waveform also can be drawn like this. So this is T, and uh, we can able to write I. So this will be the maximum value of current I M. Obviously, you can mark zero, then it will be pi, and uh, this is two pi. Likewise, it goes on. Okay. So these are the waveform of voltage and current. This much of voltage and current that is going to generate. Uh, based on Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. So this is the way how to produce the alternating uh, voltage and current. So let us conclude the session. So in this session, we have discussed about um, how to generate the alternating current and voltage. You need to consider the diagram. Okay. Then you are keeping a coil in between a magnetic field and you are trying to rotate the coil in different angles. So with respect to the rotation, what is going to happen? Uh, the EMF that is generated in the coil and uh, and, in, and also current. If you connect a resistive load over that, definitely current will be passing. Current will be circulating through the resistive load. And uh, we have derived the expression also. So based on the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, uh, we have derived the expression like E is equal to E m sine omega t. Okay, so that's the final expression. E m sine omega t. Similarly, I is equal to I m sine omega t, where I m is the peak value and E m is also peak value of voltage. And uh, at the end, I have written, I have applied the relation between time period and frequency. Then I have modified the equation as E is equal to E m sine 2 pi by into t, 2 pi by t into small letter t, where t capital T is the time period, t small letter t is the function. Okay. So this is actually the output voltage generated across the coil. Okay. Uh, this is actually belong to how to produce uh, alternating voltage and current. If you are having any queries, please put up in the comment box. I will revert. Finally, thank you for listening to this video.